mark 4 11 to you has been entrusted the mystery of the kingdom of god that is the secret counsels of god which are hidden from the ungodly but for those outside who are the ones who are outside the ones who came heard did not come back to jesus but went away without understanding everything becomes a parable in order that they may look and look but not see and perceive and perceive and hear and hear but not grasp and comprehend lest they should turn again and it should be forgiven them listen just reflect for a moment when you first received the gospel of christ do you remember that do you remember that the first time when you received the gospel of christ and you accepted christ how did you receive by hearing the word of god and as you were listening to the word of god you began to believe you began to respond and there was conversion in you you took a decision to repent you took a decision that lord i'm not going to follow my old ways i'm going to do what you say and that's the time the change took place so at your conversion came forgiveness of sins so he's saying when you sit with the lord and you ask him to teach you he will not only teach you but he will also lead you into repentance and you will begin to get converted and transformed and daily there will be a change in you which will make you more and more like jesus praise the lord so the more and more you study the word of god the more and more he will teach you and the word of god will transform you change you so when you see and see and you hear and hear the word of god it will bring a change in you but those who see and see and do not understand or comprehend what happens to them there's no conversion they come for the retreat they go back home the same their sins are not forgiven praise the lord and my brother was sharing his testimony and he said jesus just forgive my sins i i don't mind even if you give me cancer now listen god doesn't give you cancer cancer comes from the devil sickness does not come from god praise the lord and god will not give you eh, all those things now the moment you confess and you believe by faith that very moment your sins are forgiven let me share a testimony which will bless you there was this rich man and this is a real testimony there was this rich man who had a wife and this man loved his wife very much but all the time this wife was always sad she had everything she had a husband provided with everything but yet she was sad he took her to many places for counseling but nothing seemed to happen so he once brought his wife to a counselor and he asked her why are you sad and she poured out her heart and said i've committed a blunder in my life and i know and i know i've committed such a worse sin that god can never forgive me he began to make her understand through the scriptures she would not understand so he began to pray do you know when you don't know what to do there's one scripture that will bless you always we'll study tomorrow okay that comes from the gospel from the letter of james 1 he says if any one of you is lacking wisdom let him ask of god and god will surely give him you know what's the meaning of wisdom wisdom is that principle that when you follow it it will give you the solution to your problem a solution that comes through the word of god and the good news is anyone who is lacking wisdom when he ask for wisdom god will surely give that's the that's the promise of god so he began to ask god and said lord i don't know how to solve a problem so please teach me please show me and the lord gave him a revelation and he said my dear sister i want to tell you supposing you and i go for a evening walk and we are going along the river bank and it's about to set and he said now start imagining what i'm saying imagine we are walking there and it's about to set and we go and sit by the river now how do you find the water 
She said, calm and quiet. Do you, can you hear the birds singing? She said, yes. Now, the sins that you have committed, according to the quantity of your sin, carry a stone that is around that weight. So she said, my stone, I can't carry it so big. He said, okay, I will carry the sins that I have committed accordingly, a stone. And he picked up that stone and he said, now this, this many sins I have committed, okay, I am putting, throwing it into the river, this stone. He asked her, did you see the stone? She said, yes. What happened when the stone hit the water? She said, there was a big splash. The water was disturbed. And then he said, what happened to the stone? I saw the stone go inside. He said, good. Now that your sins are great, the stone is too big for you, let me help you. Come on, let's both carry it. And he said, come on, one, two, three, let's throw your stone. And he asked her, what happened? The splash is too big. What happened to the water? It's shaking all around, disturbed. What happened to the stone? She said, it went inside. Now what do you see? Oh, the water has become calm. What about the stone? She said, I can't see. What about my stone? She said, I can't see. So my big stone, my small stone, your big stone, both went into the same water, but you can't see. So whether your big sin or small sin, when you confess, the blood of Jesus covers it, blots out, wipes out, erases completely. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And he said to her, listen, precious one, no matter what your sin is, God forgives you completely. And that was the first time she realized and she accepted and her life was changed. Yesterday the same thing happened. There was one man in the congregation who had unbelief. God was performing so many beautiful things yesterday. And this man was sitting there with his eyes wide open. When we asked to clap hands, he would not clap. When we would say, close your eyes, he would not close. And I began to ask God, God, how do I make him understand? Please help me, give me wisdom. And the Lord said, tell him to lay hands on the, child, on the person who is in front of, her, front of him. You mean to say, Lord, he has got no faith? He is not even believing? And you want me to tell him to lay hands on a girl who is sitting in front of him? The Lord said, yes. So I came to him when the worship was going on and I said, put your hand on that girl in front. He could not believe. He said, just put your hand and pray for her. He began to pray for her. I don't know whether he prayed or no, but he put his hand. The Lord said, tell him about the second hand also. Put the other hand also. So he put on her. The moment he touched her, my God, the power of God came upon that girl and she was crying and crying and crying. I called them both out and I asked the girl, what happened? I don't know. From his hand came the power inside of me and I don't know, I am healed all over. This man could not believe, first of all I am with doubt and with my hand this girl got healed. And the Lord said, now tell the girl to lay hands on him. And she laid hands on him and we prayed. I said, brother, close your eyes. Thank God, might be the whole congregation was watching him. He closed his eyes. This time he obeyed. And we finished our prayer. And the Lord said to me, tell him, your back is healed. Your legs are healed. And quickly he said, I can't sit for a long time because I've got a bad back. I said, it's gone. Bend and see. He saw it was gone. Your legs are healed. He saw it was gone. I said, sister, pray over him one more time. She began to pray again. And this time the Lord said, somebody back home got healed of spondylosis. He said, that's my wife, she's suffering from a long time. And she was seated there, she too got healed. Then I asked him, now do you believe it's all real? He said, yes, I believe. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when you receive the word of God with faith, your life is changed. Your life is transformed. That word of God inside of you will bring a change in you. And that's why Jesus said, those who receive and see with eyes of faith, their sins will be forgiven. 
Praise the Lord. Isn't that a good news? Come on, isn't that a good news? That's why we who have believed, we enjoy sitting in the presence of God, listening to the word of God for us. But those who have not yet had the revelation, they see it from outside and they see why these people are sitting on the chair from morning till night. Because they are seeing, but they can't understand. They are hearing, but they can't listen to the voice of God. Praise the Lord. And that's why they don't get converted and because of which their sins are not forgiven. Praise God. Okay, then. Then Jesus is explaining. Now very carefully, listen. Might be you have having a good life with Jesus from a long time. Might be you have having a fellowship with Jesus from a long time. But it's not necessary if you are having relationship with Jesus for 10 years that means you are senior most a person can be having relationship from last one week but he can bear much fruit than a person who is from last 10 years so years I've got nothing to do many people say do you know how many years I am in the revival so what praise the Lord okay so when you are going to walk in faith these are the things that the enemy will use so that you do not bear fruit. Might be many of you are in a position where it's sprouting. Some of you are even plants, big plants, but bearing might be little fruit. Some of you no fruit at all. And let's check out why we are not able to bear fruit. In Goa, I am just marveling wherever I go. Yesterday we were in Brother Alfred's house. And when you enter the gate, you have to stop your car, pick up those branches, push it up, because those mangoes are literally going to hit your head. They are so low. And when we look at that, it's something that we will never see in Bombay. When the mangoes are so small, not one mango will be on the tree. Because those boy, every young boys and girls, they will throw stones or something, but get that fruit out. Praise the Lord. And here, when, I, when we are going by, I say, can you see? And those who are from Goa, they say, hmm. <laughs> but when we see that, we are saying, wow. Okay, tell me one thing. How many of you would look at a tree full of fruit? And how many of you would look at a tree where there is no fruit? Which one would you prefer? With the fruit. Because when you look at that tree full of fruit, you are enjoying to see it and you will say, my God, these people have been taking good care of this tree. So who gets the glory? The owner of that tree. Praise the Lord. Now you are a branch belonging to Jesus and Jesus is the true wine and you are the branch. So when you start bearing fruit, the Father in heaven receives glory. And to do that, he wants to nurture you, he wants to take care of you, he wants to prune you, he wants to do everything so that you begin to bear much fruit. Praise the Lord. And here Jesus said, the farmer goes and sows and then he goes to sleep. He is sleeping. But praise God, even in his sleep, the word of God says, it's still growing. How it grows, he doesn't know. But it is growing. And Jesus is giving us an example, so also